In this video, we'll talk about one more example and a particularly famous one dealing with volumes of surface areas of solids revolution. The example here is what's called Gabriel's horn. Um, and the idea is you're rotating the graph of y equals 1 over x from the area from 1 to infinity around the x-axis. So it's an improper setup here infinitely long sort of region that we're going to rotate on the x, we want to figure out what is the volume, what's the surface area of this solid revolution. Picture you have in mind here, right, here's the graph of 1 over x, and I'm rotating this around the axis here. Let's figure out the volume of this solid revolution. The volume here, this is normal volume of the solid revolution calculation here, should be the integral from 1 to infinity of pi times the radius squared. Now the radius here is this length, so it's the function value, this is standard disk method. This is times one over x squared dx is pi, the integral from one to infinity of one over x squared, and that I can integrate. Negative pi over x from one to infinity. This is convergent because I could limit this, I could plug in r for the upper limit, take the endpoint, it would go to zero, so I can leave it like this. And this gives me pi because the bottom endpoint is the one that sticks around. This thing has volume pi. Good. What about its surface area? Now its surface area, we know how to calculate it from our formulas earlier on surface areas of these solids. The surface area should be found by the integral from one to infinity of two pi, the radius one over x times the height which is square root of one plus one over x to the fourth dx. This is the same one we had in the previous example. Now, what do we notice here? Well, there's not really, again, a nice way to integrate this function. However, I notice that this function here, one over x times root one plus one over x to the fourth is always bigger than one over x because that thing in the square root is always going to be bigger than 1 because it's 1 plus a positive number. This function is bigger than 1 over x, but we know the integral of 1 over x diverges, which means this integral here also diverges. So in effect, this solid has infinite surface area, but it contains a finite volume. This is sort of why to be careful when doing all these improper integrals, all these calculation stuff, because things can get weird like this. This shouldn't make any sense. If a thing contains a finite volume, it should only have a finite surface area. But this example right here has shown that if I'm allowed to do improper integrals, which is why to be careful with them, then you can break that. You can have a solid, namely this shape that's a solid revolution, that has infinite surface area, but only finite volume. There's the last example of using this formula to figure out the surface area of the solid and see that it is in fact one that sort of seems strange and that it has a finite volume and infinite surface area.